Hey, Bruce Taylor, your Boomer Consumer, and this video is all about the Autovina Planar Magnetic Headphones from Hi-Fi Man. Now, as a disclaimer, these were sent to me at no cost for a review. However, all opinions are my own, and no one reviewed this video prior to posting. Got that all the way. Let's, let's just talk about headphones for a minute. You know, I think I've said this before, but when you're looking to get highly resolving sound, and you're trying to do it with a two-channel stereo 2.1, the thing is, a lot of people forget about the room. Well, good, high-quality headphones eliminate that, and you can get sound rivaling multi-multi-thousand-dollar systems with room treatment by just getting a great pair of headphones and a decent quality headphone amp and DAC, such as the Hi-Fi Man EF600. Now, I noticed that these were both released about the same time, maybe at the same time, so I think the idea is that they kind of work together as a team. We're going to talk about that a little bit later in this video. Now, these are priced at $19.99, so they're not cheap. But, you know, they'll say you get what you pay for. So let's talk a little bit more about the Autovina Planar Magnetic Headphone. So let's talk about what you get in the box. And the first thing, these come in a very nice travel case. Of course, you get the headphones themselves, but you also get a 3.5 millimeter uh, cable, so one and a half meters long. You get a three meter long XLR cable, and then a three meter long 6.35 millimeter cable. So in other words, Hi-Fi Man has you covered no matter how you connect your headphones to your headphone amplifier. Hey, let's just talk about specifications on these, all right? So... These are rated at 20 ohms, and the sensitivity is 97 dB, as well as they weigh about 16.57 ounces, or 470 grams, and the frequency response is 5 to 55 kilohertz. So, yeah, these are actually fairly easy to drive headphones. So let's talk a little bit about the, the build and, and, you know, why they made these. And so Hi-Fi Man wanted to build a set of headphones that had a super wide sound stage. And that I think they were trying to mimic the Bayreuth Festival Theater, it's, I think in Germany, the, the acoustics in there, the extra wide sound stage that these have to offer. And they did this by building a uh, what they call a resonance chamber, or, or they tweaked the resonance chamber of these headphones. And I have to admit, uh, when I did my music, right, when I listened to this thing, and then I had them for a couple weeks now and did some very serious testing with them, they do deliver. Uh, but we'll talk about that in just a moment. I love the frame on here. This is a CNC machine, hand-polished frame on these headphones. You got a nice leather-type headband on here. You have a very thick, very soft padding. And of course, you have a nice metal trim on here, as well as these wood resonance chambers, as they call them. And of course, they're nice and stretchy, super comfortable. They weigh just a little over a pound. They don't feel like they weigh much. They're very, very comfortable and designed for long-lasting listening sessions. And that's something I truly truly enjoyed about these. Easy to adjust. The, they just have a lot of quality. If you look at the ear cups in here, you kind of see the drivers on here. They use the Super Nano Stealth Magnets on here, and that reduces distortion. Basically, that's the idea. And planar magnetic headphones, I think, in my opinion, are just some of the best sounding headphones on the market. These are closed back. But again, they're designed to give you that extra wide sound stage, a highly resolving sound stage. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my initial impressions of these. And the first thing is I thought including the travel case was a nice touch. They give you plenty of cables to connect with. I like the synthetic or the, the leather. I'm not sure if it's a synthetic leather or not, but it feels like leather. All right, it feels like leather. I thought the machine frame was very impressive. I like the fit and finish of these headphones. They seal over the ears very, very well. Again, these are closed back headphones, right? 
I thought they were extremely comfortable and they're lighter than they look. They, they, when, when you're wearing them, they feel a lot lighter than they look. And I thought that the ear pads on here were just really, really super comfortable. So those are my initial impressions. Now let's talk about what I use for sources for testing. All right, so I have a Windows 11 laptop. I'm using Music B, um, connected to the Hi-Fi Man EM600 R to R DAC and headphone amplifier. I've used the balance connection with these. Um, I also have a Weem Pro connected to the EF600 as well for high res streaming from Amazon Music HD. So I'm pretty sure I got all the digital bases covered. I haven't listened to any analog sources with these just yet. Pretty much all my streaming has been Redbook. CD quality from my NAS, which uh, I use uh, Plex Media Server with that. So those are kind of the sources that I use. So some of the examples of music I listen to, and I have hundreds of tracks, but I just want to tell you a few of my favorites. And Depeche Mode or Depeche Mode, uh, Depeche, I think, uh, however you want to pronounce it. The, there, uh, there's two uh, track, it's called Enjoy the Silence from their Violator album. The bass is just super hard hitting on these. Uh, and it's a great track to test the bass on your headphones or your speakers. Um, yeah, it's kind of a, a electronic music, but it sounded fantastic with these. But I still never really got that ultra wide sound stage with it. However, I'm a big B.B. King fan. And so when I demoed B.B. King's Live at the Apollo and the track The Thrill is Gone, holy cow, it sounded like I was in the Apollo with B.B. King. That sound stage just, whoom, expanded. I got to tell you, I was above impressed with just how big of an open and airy these things sounded. And I'm telling you, they walked all over the Arias, my Edition XS, some Sennheiser uh, headphones that I have, just, just stomped them when it comes to the sound stage. So it's going to be uh, the music that you select is very, very important when you want that super, super high uh, resolution and you want that super high or super wide sound stage, okay? The sources make a huge difference. That source material, I should say. As far as, uh, again, I think we already covered soundstage, but as far as imaging is concerned, yeah. Uh, maybe some people confuse imaging and soundstage together. I don't know. Um, but imaging is placing the instruments and everybody on that soundstage. That's my explanation for it. Okay, if I want to test things like mid-range, and the highs, and I want to get a good, good idea how it was going to so uh, sound. Carol King's Tapestry album, uh, so far away, the piano, the piano notes, the hit on there, the airiness of the voice, how there's the lack of sibilance, it's all there with the Audovina headphones. Again, uh, the sound stage wasn't as wide. But if you especially listen to live type recordings, that's when you're going to say, ah, I get it. I get what they're trying to accomplish with these, okay? So, so far away, beautiful tune, great for auditioning headphones or speakers, et cetera, because your uh, Carol King's voice has just got a, a smoothness to it, the breathiness, the tonality, it's all there. It's a great way to audition something. So I'm going to give you my kind of final thoughts on these. And that is, especially paired with the EF600, I think they're really, they are made for one another, okay? But that being said, these are probably an in-game headphone for a lot of people. Even if you just use them occasionally, they're going to last you a lifetime. They're built very, very well. Everything reeks of high quality on these. The whole design, the build quality, the sonic characteristics of these headphones. I think uh, if you have 
if you have Autogreena money, then you got Autogreena money. Of course, there's a lot of other options on the market. But let me just put it to you this way. To get the resolving power and the sound state of these headphones mixed with the EF600, could do the EF400, you get that kind of power. And you try to replicate that in a room with box speakers or open baffle speakers, what have you, an amplifier and all that stuff, you're going to spend a multitude more money after you do the proper room treatment. Now, remember, headphones eliminate that. We're going to talk many, many times. What This would be under 3000 bucks, and you've got a highly resolving system with a great super wide sound stage, super resolving for a fraction of what you would have to spend to replicate that in a room with speakers and other gear. Okay? Just putting it out there. Convince me I'm wrong. <laughs> so the bottom line is, these are going to be a lifetime investment, a lifetime headphone. I'm not sure how much more money you would have to spend on headphones in order to get something that sounds halfway or incrementally better than you can get for the 1999 for the Hi-Fi Man Autovina headphones. And that is my review. So thanks so much for watching. Bruce Taylor, OK Boomer, the Boomer Consumer, Bruce Taylor. Take care. See you in the next video.